my lecture, which is standard model. BSM is all easy, so don't. Okay, much easier than. Uh, you're, you're not plugged in. Yeah, because nothing has been measured yet. So. Uh, well, there are constraints. So, um, okay. So we talk about standard model. Standard model is a uh, is very successful in the sense that uh, I can use it uh, to calculate anything I want, uh, and uh, anything I can measure, not anything I want, anything I can measure, and uh, they seems to work. I can make new predictions, and they seem, uh, you know, keep working. So it's it's very successful. Uh, However, we I think uh, it's it's useful to keep in mind that uh, um, it's not a it's it cannot be the fundamental theory of nature. Okay, so I think it's just uh, basically the the point uh, is that uh, there depend you know well you can count there is a there is a there's order twenty parameters in the in the standard model. Okay. Well, we don't expect uh, fundamental theory of nature has order 20 parameters. Okay, so uh, I guess I'm uh, preaching to the choir here. You know, you're all string theorists, so right. So th this should be very reasonable. Um, so we want to explain them in terms of a more fundamental theory. Um, so associated with this, there are there are you know, all these kind of problems. So, you know, there are. There's a hierarchy problem which I'm going to focus on, and uh, and uh, there are, you know, uh, flavor or CP problems uh, that uh, that we need to understand. Um, I'm we are missing stories about uh, well, what is the stories about uh, dark matter and uh, and the dark energy? Okay. And obviously, oh, I can, I could, I guess I could add the, add the quantum gravity as well. Okay, so uh, I think for these, uh, we have too many models and uh, not enough methods to test them. And uh, for this one, we don't have any useful models. And uh, this one, I, well, we're making progress on that, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to so, but even from this, uh, it's just to cover all these is is too much. Okay, so I'm going to focus really on this just hierarchy problem. Okay. If you wanted to chat about the rest, I w I'm happy to chat with you about it. But this is going to be too much to to cover. Okay. Um, so hierarchy. Hierarchy, well, some people prefer to call it a problem. Someone call it a, a puzzle. Somewhat, uh, I don't know, call it a paradox. <laughs> oh, well, you will see in what sense it's, uh, it's somewhat people think. It. <laughs> right, some people wanted to call it an opportunity. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, why hierarchy problem? Because we live in a hierarchical world, right? So, uh, so I know there are many scales. You know, there is a there's a 10 to the 19 GeV, which is a you know quantum gravity. Yes, it's um, then the next scale we know. Oh, this is some super log scale. Imagine this uh, is 10 to the 2 GeV. This is the weak scale, right? Weak interaction. The next scale we know is about a GeV. This is QCD strong interaction scale, right? So, and I can keep going. Perhaps I can add a MeV as well. And uh, this is uh, actually the scale of nuclear physics. And. Uh, EV. Right. So this is at this scale we talk about atoms, and below that we talk about chemistry. And uh, the the last scale, let me just mention that, uh, which is a uh, 10 to the minus 40 GeV, 
which is the size of the universe. Okay, so we, we, we live, a, live in a world with all these very, very different scales. Okay, I think, uh, well, as a physicist, I think you should be puzzled by this. Okay, now, um, just at this level, you know, how, how do I get the, all these numbers come out? Suppose you think the fundamental theory is 10 to the 19. How do I get in the 10 to the minus 40 come from 10 to the 19? So that, that is the question. Okay. So now, but the next question is that, the, again, we want it to be more precise. Right, so, what should we really worry about this, this hierarchy? In what sense we should worry about it? Which one we should worry about? Which one we shouldn't? Right, so that that is the. Uh, so yeah. So let me just also. This is like W Z H top quark, G E V H. This is the rest of the quarks, bottoms, and uh, there's some tau leptons here, and and down down on here. There's uh, these are the neutrinos. Okay. I also have all these. Uh, uh, apparently, different particles also have very different masses. Okay, should we should I worry about this, or should I worry about this, or should I worry about the hierarchy between this and that, and so on? Which one, you know, is really worrisome? Which one is, uh, yes, we should worry, but not maybe not too much, and so on. Okay. So, to understand this a little bit, let me just also talk a little bit about uh, the. The philosophy, a philosophy called the effective field theory philosophy. Okay, so this is a. I think you heard about this, but let me just uh, emphasize it. Okay, so philosophy goes like the following. So suppose so E is the energy I care about. Right. So it's, uh, suppose there is the, the the mass of the particle I care about, and uh, the the energy scale I'm doing my experiment, and so on. But suppose you think uh, this, what's happening at this energy scale? is uh, explained by some new energy scale that is uh, higher than this scale. So some use L, M, but you can sometimes we use uh, just lambda to cut off. So this is really the scale of new physics, or it's the cutoff, the low energy fatty field theory. OK, it's the cutoff of the low energy fatty field theory. And uh, this is at this scale, I should, be, I should be transitioning into another different theory. Okay. So as far as we can tell, all the series we know, the standard model is a low energy fatty field theory. Okay. So it's a. Uh, uh, we don't quite know where the cutoff is, but it, it is a low energy fatty field theory. The cutoff is at least there is a there is a there is a cutoff at the, at the Planck scale, but may may well be sooner. Okay. Now. But from this, in order to start from a this, make a prediction of a scale at this, what you want you wanted to do is there's some R renormalization group equation that uh, you 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 can, or just simple uh, R you know, or RGE scalings that you can do. Um, so what is the behavior of theory going, flowing into lower uh, scales, flowing into IR? And uh, so this is by, for example, you can you can integrating out integrating out uh, this high energy degree of freedom. Okay. And uh, the low energies, the the the, the, the operators in the theory will change. Okay, just to 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 reflect the fact that you, you are integrating out degree of freedom. So now, I don't think we know all everything about what the, the, these RGE will do, but we do have a lot of experience. We have a lot of examples, right? So to see, so um, there is a I don't know. You, you can call it a law, or you can call it a, uh, an experience. And uh, someone will say it maybe is even a, a pseudo theorem or something. Uh, is that uh, is that that is just uh, everything uh, that is allowed is uh, 
mandatory. Okay, it's just everything that is allowed will be generated. Okay, with uh, with uh, with order one strengths. Okay, so I think this is uh, sometimes called the totalitarian principle by Gelman. I think, okay, anyway, but it's not really a principle, but uh, it's uh, just a sort of experience. You, you see that this does happen in almost all the examples. So this, this means that uh, from, the, from the point of view of a low energy effect, effective field theory, we do not expect, you know, small, small numbers, okay? Unless there's something, uh, you know, modulo, modulo dynamics, modulo some dyna special dynamical reason, dynamical reason. Yeah. Anyway, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, modulo special dynamical reason. Okay. So from this point of view, if you just take this point of view, you know, like that, it's a little bit of puzzling to understand why should I have small numbers like this mass, but much smaller compared to that. And all these, the rest of the mass are very different, okay? It, it looks puzzling. This is the hierarchy problem in, a, in this very, you know, uh, cartoon version, okay? But we do know ways of uh, having this kind of a hierarchy, okay? So the, there is not that we, don't really know anything about it. We, we actually know how to how to generate such such a hierarchy. So let, let's just have two. Let me just briefly mention two ways of uh, generating large hierarchy. Okay. So first is obviously I have some symmetry. The symmetry is in such a way that uh, that uh, that protects uh, the small parameters, okay? Or, or in a sense that if I set the small parameter to zero, the theory has an enhanced symmetry. Okay. So in that way, you can you you you, you can see that uh, now it's it's okay. I can set a, a set a small parameter somewhere. Oh, no, you you, have, you still have to ex explain where that small parameter come from. But at least it will not be corrected by going from high scale to low, low energy scale. Okay, it will not. Uh, yeah. So. So there are some obvious examples. Example one is fermions. Fermion mass. Okay. So, suppose I have two. Okay. Suppose I have fermions, so I have two fermions, so their, their kinetic term is uh, just very easy. Okay, so this term has two U1 symmetries, preserves two U1 symmetries. So there is a, you can call it, there's a U1 Q, um, which in under that symmetry, C, So I, I, I write it uh, the, this way in sort of in the way of this is the particle, this is antiparticle, and this is you can call this a charge if you want. Um, and uh, the the next symmetry is uh, is uh, you can call it a U1 chiral, which is uh, is the symmetry that uh, both rotate by the same angle. So these two U ones are the symmetries of the, the kinetic terms. Now imagine, now imagine I, I start to add mass terms, okay? So let's see, mass term. Okay, 
So there is one, one possibility is to, I ju I'm just going to add a mass term like this. Okay, plus, uh, plus an emission conjugate. And, uh, and this breaks both of those U1s. Okay, so. And uh, this is called a Majorana. Mass term. Okay. And uh, there's another way of adding mass term, which, which is I don't write a, t a term like this, but I only have mass terms like that. Okay. This one preserves the first U1, but breaks a uh, breaks U1 chiral. Okay. And this is called Dirac. Well, I, I implies that I also write a mass term for it. So oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I should uh, should have said that. Yeah. 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 Um. Um. Okay. Now. Now, what is the the correction? Suppose now I also add interactions. No, I I wanted to add interaction, arbitrary interaction series, uh, into this series. But uh, suppose my interactions preserve. Both of these U ones, okay, which is not very difficult. Right? QED pr uh, preserve both of these U ones, for example. Right, so, now what is the correction to to the mass in this theory? Okay, you can draw arbitrary loops and so on. Okay, so what is the uh, correction to a fermion mass? Right, so naively, based on dimensional analysis, you will think it's something like this. Okay, it's a mass as a has a dimension one. So, but it turns out that this is not the case. Okay, this term is not there, but I what you have is a term looks like this. Okay, to understand this is very easy to understand because well you have to break one of those U ones at least to generate a mass term, and then the mass parameter is the only sporion in the series that breaks that one. So whatever correct to the, the mass must be pro proportional to the spur on itself. So you only have this. This doesn't exist. Okay. So yes, so fermion mass, it is UV sensitive, but it's only logarithmically sensitive. Okay. And log we don't worry too much about. Okay. So so for for, for that fig for, for these uh, this picture, you know, you, you think there's an order's magnitude difference, but when you, once you take the log, they are not so, s that's not too different, okay? So you, you don't, you don't worry, if it's just log sensitivity, you don't worry about it too much. Okay. That's why. So that's why when we talk about the hierarchy problem, we usually don't don't refer to the the fact that the, the fermions has very different masses. Okay, and the fermions has very different mass from the Planck scale, because at least the fermion mass are protected by chiral symmetry in the standard model. Okay, for most of the fermions in standard model, they are, they are Dirac, but they are still protected by the chiral symmetry. And uh, while it's still a puzzle, you still have to understand where those numbers come from. But at least uh, once you, suppose I have my UV theory that I calculated a, a Yukawa coupling, I, I don't have to worry too much about, uh, you know, when, when you scale this down to low scale, the, the, the number is going to, be ch going to change a lot, okay? So let, let me emphasize that, why is this a problem? You know, why, why can't I just, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm going from high scale to low scale, number change a lot, that would be very strange. Okay, this means that my high scale theory somehow has, has some coincidence <coughs> with my, my low scale theory that uh, co conspires to give me a number. Okay, that is, uh, that is strange. Okay. Uh, 
that is a bigger problem. So, so, but at least these things are not suffer from that. This is called a technical natural, by the way. This is called a technical naturalness. So, so yeah. So sometimes the, the these these words are used interchangeably. So naturalness, technical naturalness, hierarchy problem, and so on. But they are related, but they don't refer to exactly the same thing. Okay. So another example of using semi of a, uh, of a, well another example of using symmetry is uh, is well known that it's just supersymmetry. Okay. Uh, which is literally also using chiral symmetry, by the way. So because supersymmetry is a symmetry between fermion and the bosons, and the fermion mass are protected by chiral symmetry. So Oh, I will, we'll, we'll talk about this later. More later. Okay. In ten minutes, hopefully. All right. And uh, the s uh, there are additional examples. Okay, with symmetry. Another symmetry. So, so it looks like if we don't. We decided that we're not going to worry too much about fermion mass. And but what about scalar mass? There is a symmetry to protect scalar masses. Okay. So a symmetry is called a shift symmetry. So suppose I have a scalar. Okay. So that protects the scalar mass. Uh, of course, these are the gold stones. Okay. So this is another. Um, you, you can have mass scales much uh, smaller than the cutoff and so on. And of course, the goal, uh, in, in reality, we don't see massless particles. They always have some mass. But the idea is that I'm always going to always get, have a small explicit breaking of the global symmetry, of the remnants of the global symmetry that protects the, the, the mass so that it will generate some mass again. And uh, But that ma the mass parameter is, is controlled by a small parameter. Okay, it's technically natural again, in the sense that I switch off that uh, that that sporium and I, I I have an enhanced symmetry. So so that's natural. So for example, uh, the mass of pi on, as we just learned yesterday, is proportional to the sporium of quark mass. Okay, and this is the sporium that generates the the pi on mass. Okay. So there are additional. There another example of using this to try to protect the mass is called the composite Higgs model. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So it's called the composite Higgs model. Okay. So we will talk about more about that later. Okay, so this is one way of of generating a, a, a larger scale hierarchy, and uh, there is a sort of another way, uh, if you want, um, is to. The second way is that uh, I, I will start a series almost at no scale. Okay, so I will perturb. perturbing a nearly at least uh, scale invariant theory. You can call it a CFT if you want. Um, with, a, with a small perturbation. Okay. So something like a lambda O is the dimension of the operator that I add, and I'm, you know, suppose I, I'm, I'm in a regime where D O, a small perturbation is that I'm in a regime where D O is very close to four, so but slightly, let's say it's slightly less than four. Okay. So in that case, let's see. So what happens if I scale this, this, uh, this operator down? The coupling constant um, is going to, to 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 change. Just based on this very simple scaling dimension, you can see that the coupling constant will become uh, yeah. 
separated like this. Okay. And uh, so the coupling constant will become stronger when you go to lower energy. Okay. At some point, it will become very strong. It will, it will trigger something. Right, then, then, then this is stopping a small perturbation to the theory. It will, it will make the theory completely change into something else. Okay, at the, the energy scale, when that happens, is the energy scale that you are generated. You're generating a new energy scale that characterizes this, uh, you know, perhaps a phase, tra phase transition. So if you, you can just, let's just do some naive estimate. Suppose this is when this, uh, uh, this, this coupling becomes strong. And that scale, so let's call this E star. Okay. And uh, therefore, the E star that you generated, compared to the, the scale you start out with, is given by a formula or something like this. Okay. Okay. If delta is small, very small, you see this is a large hierarchy. Okay. So lambda is not a big number. A and a, you, you see this is a very large hierarchy. So I'm not saying anything very new here, okay? So, so for example, QCD is a, is, a, is a fairly close example to this, okay? So, okay. so this is, this is, yeah. Okay. Again, the, and sort of like an example of using this uh, type of uh, picture to Generated uh, a big hierarchy is the is the is the composite Higgs model. Okay. So so far so good, right? So so looks like uh, this is a you know, we have lots of ideas and uh, um, so but let me. Before I go into specific models, let me just also tell you what the usually people's concerns are. Okay, so, so why why there are still concerns about why it works or not? Okay, so it's again coming from this picture that uh, I have uh, some theory at n Planck. In the end, I wanted to get, for example, get down to weak scale. Okay, the Higgs, the mass of the Higgs. The, the so we have all these beautiful ideas, right? So I can use SUSY. I can also use composite. Awesome, com yeah. Uh, or CFT uh, to to get get me down uh, going down scales without uh, worrying too much. On the other hand, the, all these symmetries has to be broken. All these things, uh, the nice features has to be broken. Because we don't see them around, okay? We only see standard model. And uh, suppose this is the scale; it's broken. Okay, so this scale that all these things gets broken. There's always some some mass scale. At that scale, this the you know the yeah, all these things will pr predict new physics around that scale. So either Susie or composite or whatever, they will they will do two things. You know, they will they will breaking at some scale m, and uh, they will predict the weak scale if you you build a successful model, and uh, they at the same time they also pre predict new physics around this scale. Okay, so now this is sometimes you can call this the this is the large hierarchy. We have uh, certainly workable examples to solve large hierarchy problem. So both of them, you know, simple simple models work. But also we have very little way to test this because uh, you you need to get up to very high energy scale to to be able to test uh, these models. And this is is the so-called little hierarchy. This is the, the fact that uh, I haven't seen any new physics yet. This means that new physics is not exactly, perhaps it's not exactly at the weak scale. Okay, it's slightly heavier. Okay, so that, in, that, that again, this, this gives you a little bit of worry. 
but you, you know you, you can certainly decide that since this works so that this pro perhaps uh, this already solves most of the problem you, d you can decide not to worry about that okay that, that's fine I guess okay but you can also decide to worry about that it's the, the, this, is, this is really just uh, whether, you, whether you worry about that, that or not is a little bit subjective but I think uh, well I'm not trying I'm not going to try to persuade you one way or the other but let me at least show you what is that little hierarchy problem is in 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 the in, in models like SUSY and the, and the composite. Okay. So I assume you have all the basic, uh, basic stuff about it. So you probably know supersymmetry more supersymmetry than I do. So um, um, and uh, okay. So but with the with the Susie to make a make a the first step to get into the phenomenology of Susie is to say, okay, we, we have seen standard model, right? So, but we know Su Susie, none of the, we have seen none of the, the, the super partners, right? So we, we have only seen half of Susie. We haven't seen the, the other half of Susie yet. But the first step is to put the standard model particle into super multiple. Okay. So put all the standard model particle into super multiple. So that's the first step. And, uh, okay. and uh, the second step is to say that uh, since we haven't seen the, the rest of it uh, yet, the SUSY must be broken. Okay? So you have to break SUSY. Okay? So the, let me just draw a picture of a uh, what people usually do to, to break Susie. Um, so usually we were thinking about that there are two sectors. Let me just draw a two circle. Okay. 
And uh, this sector is a, is a standard model, plus uh, it's, uh, it's partners, super partners. It's sometimes called a Depends on whether you actually literally do the minimal thing or not. This is, if you do it, it is called the minimal supersymmetric standard model. If you don't, it is. Yeah, but most of the things I say actually will not depend too much on whether it's minimal or not. Okay? And uh, this is called the visible sector. Okay. And at the same time, the SUSY supersymmetry breaking, the source of supersymmetry breaking, cannot come from within the standard model itself. There's nothing to, to break supersymmetry with. Okay. And, uh, and then th we have to postulate that there is some hidden sector. Okay. The hidden sector dynamics is in hidden sector in su such a way that it breaks supersymmetry dynamically. So the DSB of a Susie. Okay? So you may think this is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of assumption, but, uh, you know, as we learned from, uh, from uh, Jim's talk, like uh, there is a plenty of hidden sectors in, in string theory, so maybe this is not such a big deal. And uh, we know also a lot of examples that uh, the gauge theory can, can just, uh, the dynamics of some gauge theory can just break Susie. Okay, so that uh, so there are many many examples here, and uh, on the other hand, at this point, uh, the uh, visible sector ha doesn't know what happened to in the hidden sector yet. So you what you, you, you what you do is you, you you need some mediation mechanism. Okay, there there has to be some messengers that going between them. So so these messengers can be gravity. Since we know gravity certainly exists, certainly exist, okay, can actually be the gauge interaction of standard model itself, and there can be also others. There are there are many 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 mechanisms, okay. But again, what I'm what I'm going to say doesn't depend too much on which particular mechanism it is, but it's useful to remember that uh, actually the detailed phenomenology of Susie depends more on the mediation than on what's exactly happened in this DSB sector. Okay? DSB sector, what it does is just supply an order parameter. And uh, then what's really the, the spectrum of particles in here is really determined by the mediation mechanism. Okay. So are there some uh, general requirement? Are there some, uh, well, let me, let me first uh, say something. So Susie, Susie works, okay, because there's there's something so uh, the something called the non-renormalization theorems, okay, which is just a slightly fancy way of saying that uh, it doesn't get corrections. It does not get uh, strong corrections once you scale down from uh, from. <coughs> from UV to the IR. Um, okay. And but this is applies to, to supersymmetric theory. Okay. But on the other hand, you, you we know that we have to break SUSY. Therefore SUSY breaking in order to not to spoil this story, SUSY breaking has to be soft. Has to be soft. Soft means that whatever I add there do not reintroduce sensitivities. To, to UV physics. Okay, that's the meaning of soft breaking. Have you all seen non renormalization theorem and soft breaking before? Or? Well, some of you must do. So, so let, but let, let me just very quickly I'll, uh, sketch what, the, what these things are. Okay. 
so basically, so we can understand. So, so it turns out it's very easy to, to realize both of them in SUSY. So just uh, let's understand this just in a, in a very, very s simple toy model. Okay. So let's just have a Lagrangian looks like this. So this is sometimes, I think this is called the white sumino model. It's just uh, the simple thing. And uh, of course, this is not the whole story. So I, in order to discuss uh, its uh, UV beha behavior, I need to regulate the theory in, so, in some way. So I need to include a regulator. Okay? But, so let me in include the regulator this way. So that, that's my regulator. Yeah. So you're all familiar with this. So th this is supposed to give you the propagator. And this one exactly give you the higher power momentum dependence to cut off the, the, <coughs> the divergences. Okay? So that's, that, that is my Lagrangian. Now, after that, you, you wanted to... So, so the only non-trivial step, I think, is to is to say that it's, uh, it's actually consistent to impose supersymmetry on this Lagrangian, even if I think all these parameters are superfilled themselves. Okay, so this is just very similar to the Sporian ana analysis we did, but in this case, apply to supersymmetry. So I'm, I'm going to think about all these as, as, su as superfilled as well. C and the lambda, because they appear in Kähler potential, they are real superfilled. And uh, we're mass, lambda. These are chiral superfield. OK? And uh, you can demonstrate that, uh, you know, of course, in the end, you wanted to, you wanted to give this superfield lowest component of f, which is just the value of this, these parameters. And you, you see that the, that procedure does not break SUSY. OK, it's still consistent with SUSY. So so it's consistent to impose, to think about all of these as superfield and impose SUSY. Is that okay? All right. Okay. And that's all, basically. Okay. That's all there is, actually. Um, so this means, immediately this means that after I renormalize the full theory, okay, lambda cannot appear in in superpotential so by the way this is a sometimes called a superpotential this is a superpotential okay because lambda is a real superfield cannot appear inside a chiral quant quantity. Okay. And uh, um, of course, Kähler potential, which is this guy, will be normal renormalized. Right. You, can, you can work that out. But yeah, so Z will become Z times uh, something like uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm just being schematic. Okay. So there's. A, there's not. A, it's not very <laughs> precise. But the okay. C will become not renormalized. And uh, but because it's a. It's a dimensionless quantity. It's only receive logarithmic divergence. And uh, this is wave function renormalization. Okay. The moral of the story is that the whole thing only receive logarithmic divergence. 
Okay. Once you canonically normalize the field, you will shift Z into, into actual interactions, but it's at most a logarithmic divergent. Is that okay? So this is the renormalization of uh, and soft uh, Susie breaking, which is almost equally trivial to do. Um, okay, soft breaking. So I'm just going to start to break Susie, okay? By the simplest way, is think, uh, since, since all these parameters are superfilled, in Susie limit, they have a VEV, which is just their number. Now, but uh, now I'm going to deform the theory away from supersymmetric theory. I'm going to give the higher component of these superfilled VEVs, which breaks Susie. Okay, so what I'm going to do I'm going to give z is 1, right? This is the supersymmetric value. But plus this, and all these notations are historical. People choose b for this guy. And uh, and uh, this is actually a d term, but people use c for this guy. So I, I can give these two. Uh, quantity some VEV without breaking Lorentz invariance. Okay. So and the both of them break Susie. M is a chiral superfield, so it's a, its a lowest component, which I also call M, but I can give its F term a VEV. Okay. And uh, lambda is uh, again uh, I can give a lowest component of VEV, and there is also F term VEV as well. Okay, both these guys break Susie. Okay, so the next thing you do is plug this thing back into that Lagrangian and, uh, and work it out. Do you mean say the square there? Huh? Say the square, yes, obviously. <laughs> okay, anywhere else I break Lorentz invariance? <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So you see that uh, from this, you see that uh, the the following terms are generated. Okay. So let's think about uh, the scalar potential. Now we're actually talking about the actual Lagrangian. Okay. So the the scalar potential of phi looks like the following. M phi plus lambda phi square square, and this is the supersymmetric part. Okay, is the F square uh, derived from su uh, superpotential, and, uh, and then plus the supersymmetry breaking piece into phi square plus a lambda. Six five Q plus Hermitian conjugate. Okay, you can this way where mass square scalar mass square is negative C plus absolute value of B square. B and C are the are the sprayons that turn on to break Susie. Um the chiro, the chiro, uh, holomorphic quantities are E times M. This is a So these all have names. Okay, these uh, these quantities all have names. Okay, so this is the soft scalar mass, and uh, these are called the B term, 
Okay, for some reason that I don't understand why it's called a B term, but it's called a B term. Okay, maybe it's because of some contribution from B. And this is called a trilinear. Okay, we'll, we'll meet all of them in uh, in in actual uh, supersymmetric standard model. Uh, so, okay, and the, the statement is that the turning on all of these are soft. Okay. Which is also easy to argue is that uh, we have already determined the, the full dependence of lambda in this Lagrangian as a function of z, lambda, and m. Okay. All I'm doing here is just giving them a slightly different value. It w should not change the structure of lambdas. Okay. So this is slightly too quick, but that, that's basically the argument. And it turns out that uh, these are almost all the soft terms we need for the for the for, for doing uh, for, for the for the supersymmetric standard model. There are a couple more that we, you can write, but uh, you know they are usually ne neglected. Okay, so there there are yeah, and p mostly for the reason that, that they are not really generated by any of these uh, these mechanism that uh, we, we we think about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't generate a new UV divergence. Not just logarithmic, I don't generate a new UV uh, logarithmic divergence. It's, it's only it's only it's only wave function normalization. That that's all I mean. As opposed to heartbreaking, which would be Then you would generate regenerate additional UV divergence, maybe sometimes even 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 quadratic. Like if you just add some explicit break Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can add explicit breaking term that actually generate a quadratic divergence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, so the, uh, I don't understand exactly to what you have given that. If you have given that to the Z legacy, it's in the vector and like Hagel multiplexer, or if you are introducing some other like you can multiplexer. No, I'm just going to take on, uh, say, whatever the background, uh, the dynamics it is. I, in in my new vacuum, mm -hmm. and the, these are the valves of of these these fields. Yeah, but then to write the scalar potential, like you have to solve the equation of motion for the zeta. Yeah, you, you you after you have done all that, you you get that. After you you plug this back into it, you get this. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. So let, let's just do one. Okay. So let, let's say I, I take uh, I take this. Okay. I can take this. Okay. You 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 should pick up the theta square component out of this normally, but now I also have a theta square component of this. So can I can have a term which is the theta square component of that. Which is f lambda times then this is the, the, the three of this is all lowest component, right? And that is uh, one contribution to the to the trilinear coupling, right? That that is this this piece right here. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see it for the black superfield yeah. and lambda. I'm confused yeah. on z because z I thought it was a dynamical superfield. Z is not dynamical either. C c c is just a parameter. Right, so so I'm just going to plug this back into my killer potential okay. to do whatever, you know. And then now I'm d theta to the fourth, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Ah, I should say one more thing. For gauge field, okay, we haven't talked about the gauge field yet, but gauge field fills in uh, uh, f fit in uh, real multiple. It. So gauge fields. They they are in say this vector multiple it, right? But for for purpose uh, for for just for convenient purpose, it's also useful to to consider another chiral multiple it, which is the uh, field strength super multiple it, and uh, this goes like, and this is the super partner of the gauge boson, which we call gauge genos. 
and uh, so with these two you can write a Lagrangian still z e to the v so this is, I'm assuming now some complex scalar that actually uh, can can complex field can cu couple to the can couple to to gauge fields okay and this basically gives you the covariant derivative and so on it's just just if you expand them out okay and uh, and the plus d theta square Again, a coupling. Uh, okay. And the this, okay. Let me just uh, write one more step. Then I'll be done with this. Okay. So tau. You also think about that as a, as a superfield, and it has some background value, which is a uh, well. I'm probably missing some uh, factor of twos there. But I, I'm sure you can look this up somewhere else. Yeah, so. Okay, it has a f complex background value. Plus, I also turn on a f term. For the for that uh, chiral superfield, and uh, this is this term just going to give you the standard the kinetic term for the for the gauge bosons. So this is the theta angle, okay, and uh, and this is going to give you a mass for the for the gauge enos. Okay, so this is going to give you basically a fermion mass for the gauge enos. Okay, and this is also soft for the same, almost identical proof that we just given. It's okay. All right. Okay. How much time I still have? I have Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the supersymmetric standard model. Okay. So obviously now all the standard, all the fields, all the all the fields I, I have I have in the standard model now become superfields. Okay, I'm not even changing the notation, but it's understood that they are super superfields. These are in chiral multiplet, and uh, and the only difference from the standard model is that I'm now I have to introduce two Higgs doublet. One cannot do it. Okay, so you, you, you'll see immediately why. And uh, yeah, let me, don't write the kinetic term. So there is Lagrangian is uh, some Lagrangian kinetic term, then plus the, the Yukawa couplings. Yukawa couplings are like this. So Y, U, Q, H, U, except that this looks identical to the standard model, but except that now you understand, should be understood that these are superfields. H, U, and uh, Y, D, Q, H, D, and D. Okay, so this, from this, you see why I need a second Higgs doublet. Okay, in the standard model, what's here is the Higgs conjugate. The reason is that uh, the, this combination has the opposite uh, hypercharge of this combination. So you need a conjugated Higgs field. Okay? And, uh, but this is a superpotential. It's supposed to be holomorphic. You cannot conjugate a field. So you have to introduce a second one. Okay? So. Well, in, this, in, in the standard model, in principle, you can also introduce a second one. Nobody, nobody prevents you from doing that. Okay, that's called two Higgs double model. But, uh, yeah. So H D E. Uh, without uh, worrying about neutrino mass again for for the moment. Okay. So this is the ah. So there is should be the left tongue doublet. Okay. And then these two are vector like. Okay, all of these are chiral. These two are vector-like in the sense they have exactly opposite quantum numbers. Okay, you can so therefore you can actually write a gauge invariant. 
like this. Okay, and uh, so this is sometimes called a mu term for obvious reasons. So use the mu. You see, the SUSY literature is is really long, several decades. Every every single term has names. So this because there's a field that worked on a lot. Uh, people really like SUSY. Okay. So, on the other hand, these are not all the gauge invariant terms you can write. There are additional terms you can write. Okay? I can write this. No, not that. Not that again. color contraction in such a way that uh, this is gauge invariant, which is possible. Okay, all of these are possible. Okay, so, so this is a doublet, this is a doublet, and this is a color contractor with that, and these two are doublets. So all of these are, are gauge invariant, okay? And uh, now you can ask uh, why standard model don't have these things. Why do I why don't I write this for the standard model? No, no, no. Huh? You're get, getting way ahead of <laughs> of what <laughs> what I'm going to say. You're getting ahead of what I'm going to say. But the problem is in standard model, all of these are fermions. Okay, this operator violates Lorentz invariance. Okay, but here it's not because one of them can be a scalar because these are superfields. Okay, so that's the only difference. Okay, but as one of you already said, these are baryon number violating and lepton number violating. Okay, so it, I think you can still live with the fact that if you get some control of this operator, these operators, it's still okay. You can have some of them non-zero but small, but just from a, a, a cleanness model point of view, it's much better to just forbid these operators. Okay, from a, from a symmetry principle. Okay, you, you want to you want to have some symmetry principle to to say these things are zero. Okay, do I still have a board somewhere? Ah, good. It turns out that there is a, you know, well, you, you, you can just impose baryon on the lepton number, for example, okay? That, that, that element, it, it just, just get rid of these things. That's one way. And another way is to, to take the advantage of, uh, of a sub, uh, it's a C2 subgroup of R symmetry. So let's see what the R symmetry is. Okay, R symmetry is the, the symmetry where you actually rotate uh, the theta angle, no, not this. Okay, and uh, in general, a superfield will rotate under that as e to the i q. Well, let me say q phi. Where it, its argument is also rotated. Okay, so that's a that's our symmetry. Okay, so you see that uh, suppose I I write this as a phi plus say this, this right. So uh, now Q of the lowest component is just a Q of phi, and uh, but in order to have this whole thing transform homogeneously the Q of the fermionic component has to be Q of phi minus one, okay? Okay, R symmetry is not expect to be a good symmetry of, uh, of MSSM, okay? If anything, gravitational mass breaks R symmetry, okay? So, 
and all these gay genomes are expected to break our symmetry. Okay. So, um, on the other hand, it turns out we can introduce, we can take a subgroup of it called R parity, which which can be consistently imposed. Okay, theta goes to negative theta, where phi now going to something. And this I can choose to be plus or minus one, okay? As, as depend on that. That's my choice, basically. So okay. So P R for Q U D L E all these fields H U H D W alpha. Okay, so this is all for the, all these fields, and uh, I can choose it. Uh, this I will choose all these things to be negative one. I will choose these two to be plus one. Okay, I will choose this to be plus one too. This is a choice I make. Okay, I make no excuse about it. Okay, so what this does? Okay. You can clearly see that uh, this forbids all of these already. If I if I ins insist on our parity is a good symmetry, okay. This is a and the consequence of this is that uh, under under our parity, so you have to okay. The following things are out. The following fields are odd under under our parity. So these are the parity odd fields, which is a well, it basically just add a tilde onto on everything. Okay. So these are the squarks, slap tons. Uh, Higgs zenos, these are fermions. Okay, the super partner for the Higgs is actually a fermion, so these are Higgs zenos, and uh, this is the gay genos. Okay, but uh, everything we haven't observed, of course, this depends on my choice, but I, can't, I choose it such a way that everything we haven't observed is odd and not parity. Okay, all the standard model field are even and not parity. Okay, and uh, this is a good symmetry. Okay, we, if I impose R parity. So what are the consequences of R parity? Okay, so first of all, the number of uh, super partners mod two is uh, conserved. Okay, so any process you can imagine, it can go from three to one. It can never go from three to two super partners. Okay, so well, okay, I will draw one diagram for you. So this is a gluino, the super partner of gluons, and the Q, and the, this is a squark. Okay, there's such a Right, so this is this is the super partner if if you want of the gluon QQ bar coupling. Okay, and uh, and this can keep going. This. Okay, so this is a process where, where a gluino decay to a quark plus quark, quark decay to another quark, plus wino. Okay, wino is the super partner of W boson, and you see that uh, everything is, is you know at this first I started with one super partner. Decay once I have left with one super partner. Decay once I left with another one super partner. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the. And the one corollary of this is that uh, the lightest, lightest uh, super partner, the lighted, lightest particle that we haven't observed yet is. Uh, is stable. 
because it has nowhere to go. Okay, the the, the number has to be conserved, so there's there's no there's no way to go. Okay, and uh, now if you say something is stable, suddenly that ring, rings some bell. Okay, so uh, you know, sometimes the stable particles is useful, such as a so-called WIMP dark matter candidate. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, so this is called the LSP, by the way. Uh, this is basically the story why you s some people think Susie is very good at with dark matter, which is which is uh, you know, well, give and take. Okay, you 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 take whatever you you think the story is. The, the the logic is I want to forbid proton decay, and one of the ways to forbid proton decay actually give you the side benefits of having a dark matter. Okay. Uh, in last two minutes, I will tell you why I like Susie. So, so th then we will talk about the problem with, with Susie tomorrow. Okay. Uh, why do I like Susie? log of some energy scale where this is a okay so these are the inverse square of gauge couplings of the standard model okay of course, they they runs. Okay, they they're going up to high energy. They, you know, and uh, in the standard model, which I do it with a dash line, and uh, well, you know, obviously two line means a point. Okay, so unless they are parallel, which is weird. Um, of course, but on the other hand, the, the this third line didn't really meet at the point. Okay, so it it's sort of but missed quite a bit. Okay, historically, people think this is hinted at uh, even based on standard model. This hint at uh, some unification. Then the measurement of this coupling become more precise. They don't quite meet a point. Okay. Also, if you really want to squint at, there's some place they meet. This is this is uh, this around the 10 to the 14 GeV. Okay, and uh, the the early so-called unification theory at that scale also have proton decays suppressed by this uh, this energy scale. But if you remember our first lecture, this is not quite enough. Okay, for for s to suppress proton decay. Okay. On the other hand. For Susie, okay, so Susie, ah, now I don't know whether you can see this. Okay. Susie does this, this, then this, and uh, a little bit of this. So this is only impressionistic, okay, so this, this, okay. For Susie, it does this, okay, so, and uh, this is 10 to the 16 GeV. So first of all, so so this is so so this is this is nice because uh, this is not what I intended to happen. Okay, I, I j all I all I have done is just say the word Susie. Okay, and uh, three lines don't usually meet a point. Okay, and uh, and if you your dream is to find some hint about that there is a beautiful physics at a high energy scale, and uh, I think that this. Can be one of those moments. Those you say, huh? Maybe that's the way it is. Okay. It looks like a, you know, you, you got it. You get it for free. It looks like this is a hint. Okay. Let me tell you one more thing. So, so obviously you can, I can add additional matter to the standard model. Okay, without Susie to make it unify. Okay. That that that's not a, the the biggest story. The biggest story is that the unify unification 
assume there is a large scale separation between the between the gut scale and the weak scale. Okay. On the other hand, SUSY happened to be such a framework also in which it makes sense to talk about a large scale separation. Okay, it's, it's this internal consistency that makes this story very appealing. Okay, I think this is the reason that most of us like Susie. Okay, not because it solves the hierarchy problem, it does, but you know, uh, not because it's extension of uh, space time symmetry or something, but you know, we have other ways to solve hierarchy problem. But this seems to be someone is telling us that this might be the, might be the truth. Okay, all right, let's stop today. Everything can be coincidence. So, so <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, can, can you explain why uh, C2 uh, subgroup of R symmetry forbids proton decay? Well, it just forbids all those operators. You, you can verify. Yeah. Uh, those three operators? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. First operator? Uh, the, so all three of them. Yeah, this is enough to get, three also get rid of all three of them. Okay? In order to forbid proton decay, you don't, lit, you don't have to get rid of all three of them. But this happened to get rid of all three of them. Just, just this. You know. at, at the superfield level, you can, you can try it. Yes. So you did these here components, right? Yeah. No, th this, is, this is on the superfield. This is on the superfield. These are all that this factor is, is the component. Yeah. If I go very high in the number of loops, does it get spoiled or is still, uh, they still Well, right? okay, now we get into the weeds. They don't quite meet, they, meet, they, they miss by a percent, okay. but that is uh, generic. If you, you, you assume there are, there, there, are, there are lots of scales, states around here. It can easily give you threshold corrections that of that size. Same, same, same comment for the, for the higher order. Yeah, by the way, this unification has been done to two loops. I'm not saying there's one loop, yeah. So. Yeah. But that's logarithmic. Yeah, it, it's so, so, so yes, of course, if the threshold is here, <laughs> then, then it doesn't help that much. If, if, so 10 to the 3rd TV, that if 10 to the what? 3 to the 1000 TV. 1000 TV is still okay, I think. Well, of course, it depends on how much error you wanted to tolerate, right? So, but but it's, it's only logarithmic is sensitive to the, to the super partner mass. So it's fairly generic. Thank you. I will do the rest of Susie composite and let, let's see what I have time. <laughs> yeah.